to this tutorial. So I just want to uh, start talking to you guys about OpenShot today. Um, so if you're part of any of my courses at Urban International School, if you're taking art lessons from me at Canvas Kids Studios, or if you're taking um, communications technology courses or design courses from me, uh, you will most likely have to do a video project once in your lifetime with me. Um, and I'm this whole uh, YouTube channel that I created is geared towards uh, art tutorials, but this whole section has um, from start to finish what um, you need to do, uh, what you, a tutorial on how to create a successful uh, recording or a successful media by editing video sounds and images together. So um, if you're part of my courses, whether you're in communications technologies or anything, most of the time I use very similar software. So um, I, in this whole YouTube channel, I do teach um, all these different softwares. Um, of course, there's GIMP. Um, and all of the links are located on Schoology if you are part of the Urban International School group looking at this video. Um, a lot of these links are available in this um, in your courses folders. Um, it's under, if you click on the courses here, I'll just do a quick show to show you. If you, I'm just going to select one of the courses I teach, which is Communications Technology uh, for Grade 11. And you're just going to click on this purple folder right here that says Technologies, Tools, Downloads Area and you're going to be able to find um, a link that says software and technologies downloads and you're going to be finding um, here a, a list a complete list of softwares that i teach um one sooner or later i will add a bit more but for now in this uh for my courses i do teach uh GIMP, Audacity, Unsplash, Pexels, Murphy AI, OpenShot, sound effects, and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be teaching you every single tutorial in this video. What I'm going to be teaching you today is just the basics foundation of OpenShot. Um, how to import uh, media files onto OpenShot and how to download and how to get footage from other websites and put them into OpenShot. But in order for me to explain that, I just have to explain a whole bunch of other stuff before I go into that. So um, pretty much whenever you do a video project with me, I'll teach you how to do a self-recording in my classes, but I'll also teach you how to download pre-recorded footage from other people that is actually free to use from stock video websites. Um, for example, Unsplash is a really great uh, photographic reference website. It has high quality uh, photographs. Um, you can just search up anything you want um, and you, it's royalty free and it's a stock image. You don't have to worry about copywriting issues or theft. Um, I'm just going to click on um, a specific topic and you can already, already see all these wonderful high quality photos and to download the media you just click on the photo you want and just go up here and download for free. This is uh, Unsplash um, and it's great uh, to use for photographic collages um, or if you need to do uh, mood boards. Um, there's also textures. So sometimes when I do my own collages uh, digitally, I like to look for just abstract textures to create them into shapes. And they're all very, very high quality photographs. Um, and you just need to click on it and go to download free. This is Unsplash. Um, sometimes I will be using Unsplash for some of my video projects. So that's a really good site. Um, the next website I want to talk to you guys uh, for video editing is called Pexels.com. Uh, Pexels is really, really good uh, because it has videos and images and they're all stock video and images and they're royalty free and they're shared by creators. You can even see that here. It's free. Um, you can, it's people who are extremely passionate about what they do and they want to share their work uh, for other people to use. So um, if you're doing a commercial project with me um, in my arts class or if you're doing a, um, some type of uh, informative video project with me in my communications tech class, uh, I will most likely give you access to Pexels. The best thing is you don't even have to sign up. You can just start searching uh, footage. So sometimes, um, you know, I just, I'm just gonna look for a random topic. So like dog, for example, 
so you can just see there's uh, these are stock images not um, not not videos okay so to for you to access the videos you actually have to go up here so where my mouse is going here you're gonna see here photos videos users so you're gonna want to click on videos you always have to click on videos for whatever subject you want and it's going to show you a whole bunch of stock videos of just um, dogs and see that if I click on this one it just shows you a dog video like this how cute right it's adorable uh, there's all sorts of different videos um, I know one of the projects I did was a commercial for food items so you can search up whatever food and it'll bring up video images of food items like this and you can just press play and you can access this and again once again download this um, download from download you can download this footage by pressing the download up here so that's um pexels is a really good uh website for that and then um the next software that i do use uh is murph ai so murph ai is a great uh text-to-speech ai software where if you need if i ask you to do some kind of uh script writing or speech that you need to include in your video murph ai is great because if you don't want to record your own voice you can hire not hire because then you have to pay you can actually get an ai to uh read out your script or your speech and then they will um read it out for you and you can record it um and use it in your projects so this is just an example of my uh my projects uh, one of my projects here that i used the script for one of my projects um, if you want to see how i incorporated murph ai into one of my projects you're gonna have to go to the next tutorial uh because it's not in this one and this is just to explain to you guys what uh murph ai is um and see if i press play i'll just have you listen to this so you can see this is a public service announcement for covid 19 mental health support for students going back to school these recommendations can be found on the COVID-19 health, safety and operational guidance for schools on www.ontario.ca. Always remember to mask up and sanitize your hands. So it's really good because uh, I wrote, I actually, all of this text, you can see if I'm highlighting this, all of this text, I actually wrote this all out on um, a word processing software such as Microsoft Word. And then, so like I first would write it out um, onto, a, onto a text document and then I would copy and paste that speech into Murph AI and then I would turn this into um, an AI uh, speech. And I would actually uh, use, after that, I would use another great program called Audacity to record the voice audio on my computer and import that into my project now those two again um it's another tutorial itself alone uh you'll be able to find that on uh, my youtube channel uh later on uh when i link you guys but uh for this one for this specific tutorial i'm not going to do that because um, this is just to really explain OpenShot and the things and the tools that you need to uh, start your video project. All right. Okay. So that being said, um, let's start my video project. Sorry, let's start my um, my tutorial. So today I'm in this video specifically. I'm only going to be teaching you how to import files from scratch um into and start your project because some of you guys maybe aren't uh sure how to start your project so to start your project um you're going to download openshot of course um and of course you can also find the link into your schoology folder uh so you're going to have to open it first and you have to download a pexels file of video footage as well as a sound okay so i'm going to just quickly teach you how to do that so let's just say i want to create a clip of video about um somebody uh somebody drawing okay so i'm going to do a girl painting um and then i'm going to just um see okay how about 
artists. Let's just look for artists. Sorry, I'm just gonna show you how I use Paxos to look for. Um, oh, this is cool. Okay, so I really like this picture. So I'm just going to uh, download this video onto my desktop. So you can see I'm dragging and dropping into the desktop right now. Um, and that's this file right here. So if I double click and check it, it's going to show me that girl painting. Good. Okay, so that's one file I've downloaded. So you first have to uh, grab all of your files that you want to add to your project that you might want to use in your project. So first download them on from Pexels.com. And then I'm going to start looking at sounds. So the one thing I didn't show you guys is um, yet is the sound effects website. So Fezzeland Studios is a really great website because it's again royalty free sound effects and music that you can use for your video projects. So I'm just going to do a quick tutorial to show you how to how to melt the sound that I'm about to download into this art this into this art video. OK, so I'm going to uh, look for um, so right now I'm in the sound effects category, so I'm going to put painting sound. Okay, so let's do, oh, there's no sound files. Uh, so let's do scratching noises. So maybe I can incorporate a, uh, yeah. Okay, that's good enough. So I'm gonna download this scratching hair sound into my desktop right now. And that, so I'm going to, I wanna play that sound with this video footage simultaneously. And I'm also going to, um, incorporate audio as well so now I'm going to show you how to add sound to I uh, like music so you can add, it's not only music uh, sound effects you can also search up music um, but not they're not like they're very generic music though it's not like you can actually look for like a Britney Spears song or a k-pop song they're all very generic music um, I don't know why the website has it all separated by category but then you have to go up here and you have to click on royalty free music and they're all categorized for you. You can't actually search up any music. You have to, it has to be categorized. So I'm just gonna go for happy, actually maybe motivational and inspiring since this is an art thing. Um, let's see. That's, and the great thing about Fezzyland, yeah, is that you can like test out the sound before you download. that sound I like that music a lot so I'm just gonna download this music now and again I'm gonna drag this onto my desktop and now I'm gonna show you how to melt these three sounds together sorry these three project project files together so I want the video to play and but while the video is playing I want the brush sound and the music to play at the same time so now I'm gonna teach you how to do that on open shot um, so at this point, you should already have OpenShot downloaded already. Um, and there's another way to create audio files, and you can actually do that through Audacity. But this tutorial is not going to cover that. That's actually another tutorial that I already created. It's part of the, uh, sorry, it's part of this video here. It's part of the, um, I just need to click on this, sorry to check the title. So it's called Murph AI Audacity Open Shot Tutorial. Have someone read out your script. So I show you guys how to add um, a sound file from that video. But uh, right now, I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to show you how to combine all these, all the three files together. So let's open Open Shot right now. Sorry, it's being a little bit slow right now. So let me force quit again and reopen this. Hmm, why isn't it opening? There we go. So now it's open. 
Now I'm going to go and I'm so oh sorry guys. Uh before I jump ahead, sorry, I'm really, really tired right now. Um Okay, so before I start importing my files, let's kind of talk OpenShot. So once you've downloaded OpenShot and you open it, you're going to see this uh, right here. Okay, you're going to see this interface. It, there's no project. It's just blank right now. Um, you, don't, you can't do anything on here until you actually incorporate your media files into your project. But before I do that, I'm going to go and quickly explain. So here... Um, in the top left window here, it says project files. This is where you will import your project, your media files that you've downloaded. So all of your downloaded media files, whether it's images, MP3s, video downloads, like pre-recorded video download, uh, your self-recorded video downloads, anything like that is going to be found here. You're gonna, you're going to actually find them here. This is the video previews area on the right side. So this is where you check your project as you work. And this is how you time your projects to match up with um, the sound to the images. Okay, so you're going to have a track of moving pictures and then a track of sounds. So two separate tracks. Okay. And then here at the bottom where it says timeline. So this is the most important part. This is your workspace area. So the one thing about OpenShot and any video editing software, it doesn't matter if you're on Adobe Premiere Pro, if you're on um, Filmora, if you're using iMovie, if you're using uh, DaVinci Resolve, whatever video editing program you're using, they're all very similar. They all do very similar things. It's just that the interface might be different and the quality of uh, what you're doing might change. But pretty much they all do similar things, all right? So timeline is very important. So when you're creating videos, videos are essentially moving motion pictures, okay? So in difference to digital art or paintings where if you're using GIMP or Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, those are still images. So those softwares just uh, manipulate still images where OpenShot, things like OpenShot will manipulate moving pictures, right? So you can add sound to it. You can add, um, it's more... Uh, it's more like videos versus picture, okay? So um, the timeline area, you have to be really good at manipulating and matching up and synchronizing time, your sound, timing sound with the images. And to know how to do that, uh, you have to always be mindful of when and where your pictures or your images start moving and when your... Um, or where your song or your sound starts. So where your media starts versus where your where your like any media file where it starts and where it ends. Don't, that knowledge is very very important. Okay. So now that I've given you this uh, speech, and now I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay. So I'm going to start importing project files into this project. So remember those three uh, files I downloaded from Pexels and Fezzeland. So now I'm going to add those into my project. So there's two ways. I'm going to show you both ways. So the first way is if you're on a PC, uh, you're going to go up to the green button here and you're going to go and find the files you downloaded. So I've downloaded the files onto my desktop. So I just go to desktop and you see all of these files here, right? So it doesn't really matter which one. I just have to find the one that I just downloaded. I'm not sure where is it. Uh, so it might take me a bit to look for it. Um, oh, here it is. So that's, that's the video file I downloaded, the artist, right? So there, as soon as I hit, so I'm gonna show you that once again. So it's, uh, it's the green button here, and then you go to your desktop and try to find that file. Where is it? There, and as soon as you find it, you just hit open. And then once you hit open, you're going to find that file right here. Okay, and now you and you can actually drop it into your timeline like this. Okay, and then now when I when I play it, you're gonna see it move. See, just like that. Okay. And then now I've added the video, I'm ready to add my sound. So I'm going to also add um, 
So if you're on a PC, now I'm going to show you how to do the Mac way. So Macs are really awesome. I think maybe PC, some PCs will also work this way as well. But you don't actually have to press the green button to do this, to import files. You're just, all you, can, all you have to do is just find the file on your desktop and just drag and, oh sorry, they're highlighted. So just drag and drop into this project file. Sometimes what can what uh, sometimes what you can do too is um, you can actually I'm just going to minimize this, make this smaller, and then what you can do is actually directly drag that sound into your track, and it'll automatically add in your project files. That's what I really like about Mac computers. I'm not sure if the PC computers do the same thing, but that is an option there if you're on a Mac. And now you see this audio here, this audio file here. So um, now if I go back to the beginning, and if I play this, you're going to hear sound and video at the same time. Okay, so that's it for um, adding sound and so importing so that's it for this video because I'm just wanting to show you how to import files into your project and how it starts. Um, but I'm also going to go into a little bit more about other things about OpenShot. So one thing that's really annoying about OpenShot in most uh, editing software is that video files are often very large. And when it's very large, it does take up a lot of RAM, so random access memory. So in order for uh, your computer's uh, for your projects to be okay. Um, the problem is uh, even some, some of the best video editors, they always run into this issue as well where their program continuously crashes because their computer cannot handle, um, the, their RAM cannot handle the large size files. So it's best to always save your work every five minutes or three minutes so that when it crashes, because it's going to happen inevitably, it's going to crash. So once, as soon as it crashes, you can just reopen your project and keep working. So always the rule of thumb is to save every five to three to five minutes of your work so that you don't have to, um, you don't have to restart your project because that would be really annoying if you work like a whole entire like five hours and then it crashes, right? So don't do that. Um, so that's number one. And number two um, is about OpenShot is now I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the functions. So the first function I already explained is the green plus sign here where you just import your files, right? Um, that's pretty much the main function. Uh, the other functionality is, is the difference between save as and export. So if you're saving your file, you're going to save your file as... Um, I like to save it in my desktop, but you, I'm going to call this tutorial file, okay? And this is saving, okay? So save as to my desktop, and you're going to see on my desktop, now there's a, this one right here, this specific file is called tutorialfile.osp. So if you're submitting this to someone uh, who does not have OpenShot, they're not going to be able to open this because it's this is... Um, this is a file that is saved specifically for OpenShot users only. So this is a good um, this is a good uh, function. Is if you're in the middle of a project and you want to walk away and you want to eat lunch or something and come back to your projects later, that's why you want to save. So this is a good function, but it's not good to submit this these types of files for portfolio uh, assessments or for um, for your projects for your homework okay so what you want to submit usually is you want to export this file as um, an mp4 I usually want to uh, export this to my desktop I always like exporting to my desktop and I'm going to call this I'm going to name this file the same thing but here where it says uh, select from the following options target CPU MP4, right? So if you click on here, you have many different file types. Always select MP4 uh, because MP4 is the most universal. Uh, MP4s can be played on Macs and PC, AVI also, but MOV is mostly for Macs, okay? So you just never touch this set setting, but just always check that it's set on MP4. And then all you got to do is export video.
and then hit done. And now you will see you have a video to sound. Uh, where is that? Oh, here it is, tutorial file. So now you will see you have a video with sound. <laughs> So that's it, okay? And then, um, sorry, what am I talking about now? Okay, so that's how you basically include sound and video into your project. In this video file, it's not, uh, so in this tutorial, um, I, if this is not enough for you to learn how to complete your specific assignments. Um, there are multiple steps to complete your assignments. Uh, you'll have to look through um, the different steps to be able to complete your whole project, whether it's a commercial or um, an, informer, an informative uh, video. Uh, but this is just to introduce you to OpenShot. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know and I will help you. Thank you so much and um, I'll see you guys around.